Hey guys, Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks and uh, how have you been? How have you been guys? I hope everything's good with you. Everything is Gucci. Everything is where it's supposed to be. And are you still enjoying this game? Are you still enjoying this game? I don't know. So I'm back from my vacay. I haven't played this game in a while. Well, I'm lying. I played it recently. I had about 30 games, I think. But today... What are we going to do today? I thought we would talk about uh, this Russian premium that was released into World War II about a month ago or something like that. And I didn't have a chance to talk about it, so I thought I may as well cover it. And yeah, I do have this tank. I did dish out to get this tank. It's not cheap. Only 22,500 gold. Yeah, to be honest, I did not dish out that much coin on this tank. What I do... Actually, I got a trick up my sleeve. What I do is I usually buy key cards. Yes, guys, I buy the top secret key card pack for like 50 bucks. And from there, by the way, early position on Sand River, this tank, freaking amazing. If I didn't have to turn around, look at all these shots I would have. It's freaking great for early spots. This position great for early spots, and then you can actually get some damage. But since there's no one with me, I'm going to drop off here in a split moment. Anyway, what I was saying is key cards. Yes, you buy the top secret key cards, $50 value pack. And from that value pack, if you have many premium tanks, if you've been in a game for a long time like me, and I have shitloads of premium tanks, if you draw a premium tank from one of those key cards, you're going to get golden return for the tank that you already have if you draw the same tank. Now, in many cases, Wargaming screws this up and you get like different skin of the same tank. And if you get a different skin of the same tank, obviously you won't get the gold because it's considered a different tank. But if you actually manage to draw a tank that you already have, you get gold for it. And that's what happened in my situation. I actually managed to draw a couple of things that I already have. So I got free gold for it. So I didn't really pay, you know, 18,000 gold for this tank or whatever it is, like 100 bucks or something to get that much gold. I only spent about 50 bucks because, like I said, I drew a couple of tier 8s that I already had for which I got gold. So yeah, it was worth it. So if you guys ever want to buy a premium tank that you like, but you don't have the gold, but you have a lot of premium tanks, then that's the way to do it. Anyway, this tank... Is it OP? Uh, yes. No shit, it is OP. Like, look at me fighting this Type 4. Two shots. Almost take him out of the game. Reload is amazing, so you reload quite fast. So, if the tank is a two shot, you can finish them quickly in this tank because of the alpha. It does catch fire, so you have to be careful. And especially if you get hit from the front. Now, I'm not carrying fire extinguisher on this tank because I'm trying to optimize my gun. So, I'm carrying combat rations. As you can see over there. Yes, combat rations. Yes, that's what we have. But I would suggest that you get the automatic fire extinguisher. Because, yeah, this tank does get set on fire quite a lot. Now, what's good about this tank? Obviously, the high alpha gun. You get 950 alpha gun. Although, this gun always rolls low. And I think that's done on purpose. Because, you know... <laughs> <laughs> this tank is OP, and I'm not gonna complain about this tank, and I'm not gonna complain about Wargaming, and I'll just kind of state my point later on as to, you know, what I wanted to say about this tank. I mean, Wargaming, you gotta give it to them. I mean, they created a tank that everybody wants. This tank is probably in higher demand, especially by good players. They know how to play the game. It doesn't have armor, but that camo, you know, that concealment is absolutely phenomenal on this tank. So you can get yourself really close to fighting, unleash that 1000 HP, and then use your mobility to run away. Because look how quick this tank is. It's amazing. And for me, in my opinion, I mean, tank is OP. There's no question about it. If you put this tank in the right hands, it's, it's crazy good. Absolutely crazy good tank. But I do like OP tanks in this game. And I always did. I was always of an opinion that, you know, it's nice to have some OP tanks on different tiers that you can grind to, for instance, in the tech tree. Or if you want to buy, 
an OP tank. So be it. There are so many freaking OP tanks in this game right now. It doesn't really matter. It's not like this is going to break the game completely. Because you're going to have players that know how to play this tank. And you're going to have players that don't. But I do like the fact that I'm spending my money. If I am spending my money. And getting a tank that I will actually enjoy playing. Instead of something that has a potato gun. Or shitty camo. Or it doesn't have anything that stands out. That would make you want to buy that tank, right? It's nice to have a tank that's not average, is above average, and is respectable within the game. And I think that's important for premium tanks. And if you're spending, may as well spend money on a good tank. Obviously, you cannot have a lineup of OP tanks in a game because that wouldn't be good for the game <laughs> as well. But sprinkled here and there... It's not game-breaking. Wargaming made a lot of money on this tank. I mean, a lot of people bought this thing. And I'm glad I got it too, because I do enjoy playing it. It's just an amazing thing. Absolutely amazing. The camo on this tank is phenomenal. And mobility makes it even better. And like I said, I'm not going to cry about it, that it's OP. Money well spent. So, I don't have any spectacular games to show you per se. I just wanted to touch on this tank, kind of do a quick look, kind of a video, so that you guys can get my first impression if you don't have this tank yet. I suggest waiting for a good sale before you buy it, because it is freaking expensive. But do I recommend owning one? Absolutely. I think this machine is fantastic. So... I am yet to play above 30 games in this tank. I think I played maybe about 30. Something like that. Obviously, stats in this tank are super uni stats. Every game, you can easily take out 5k damage. No problem. If you play it right. If you know proper positions, so on and so forth. But be mindful of the fact that it doesn't have any armor. So anything that hits you will pan you. Also, artillery is a problem in this tank. You get hit. You get pretty much shafted. But it is nice to do this. Bing! <laughs> 894 HP. Just like that. On the poor STI. And this game, actually this game is going to exemplify how OP this tank is in right hands. If you know how to play it properly. At the end of the game, this game will be close-ish. At the end, we're probably going to be losing most of the game here. And it'll be close at the end. And you'll see how close I can get to heavies without being spotted. And was able to get some key kills at the end of the game to close it out. But this concealment allows me to stay really close to uh, the opposition. As you can see here, I'm firing 400, what, 20, 430 meters, something like that. I'm not getting spotted. That detection circle is so small. Compared to the view range circle. Yeah, it's amazing. And I rarely fire premium shells in this tank as well. So mostly fire standard rounds. The penetration is really good. I mean, you have heat rounds there in case you need the extra penetration. But I don't like heat rounds that much. Firing from long distance. Because, you know, the shells tend to go into the tank's tracks. And tend not to do any damage. So, yeah, I prefer AP rounds. So we're going to put a shell into this AT-15. And now we get spotted because he was close to us. So we have to run off. And that mobility lets you run off very fast. Just like that. No problem. No problem, comrade. No problem. So, yeah, the way I like to play this tank is... Keep reds outside of my concealment circle. Far away so that the opposition won't spot me. Make sure I have terrain to run away if I need to, if I get spotted. Now, I'm not fully optimizing this tank for camo. I'm not running green thumb or that other perk that lets you fire from concealment. I don't remember the name of that skill right now. But I am running silent driving. I mean, you've seen my setup early at the beginning of the video. That's basically what I run on this tank. Silent driving is incredible for any tank other than light tanks. So I strongly recommend it, especially for the tanks that have good camos. But I am optimizing the gun on this tank. 
because I want to be able to snap shoot just like this. I want to be able to snap shoot and run off if needed, if I get spotted. So that way you don't have to wait for your reticle to kind of shrink all the way. And you can still fire when the bloom is large and still the shell will go in the right spot. And that's what I like about optimizing the gun a little bit on this tank because you can snap shoot a little bit. Here we're gonna take out the tortoise and here we get spotted so again we're gonna run away quickly into the cover. Now the way I like playing this tank is pretty close to the opposition as I mentioned to you guys earlier staying outside of my detection circle but then staying within the vicinity so I can still keep getting shots. If opposition's tanks are getting too close to my detection circle I'm just gonna go whatever distance is needed for them to stay outside of my detection circle. And that's all I'm doing. Just moving further away and supporting my teammates as much as I can. Okay, so right now the game is tied. We're gonna make a move here. We need to try to clean this flank and I noticed that the city is fallen. All the tanks that went there are pretty much dead. Well, now they're pretty much dead. So we really need to push one of these flanks. And since I'm here, I'm going to push this flank here. But the key thing is getting rid of this STI. So that's what we're going to do. And concealment allows me to cross here without getting spotted. As you can see right here. So it is critical to have silent driving on this tank. And if you guys can put silent driving skill, I suggest you do. So uh, this guy didn't even know I was here. So we put a shell into his turret. Now we're going to back off. And look at that reload too. I mean, it's so fast, especially when you use combat rations. It's so fast, you can quickly come back and take tanks out of the game, especially like tier 8s or tier 9s. So we're going to lose our 6 cents. We're going to try to come behind this STI and take him out of the game. And again, my camo and silent driving allows me not to get spotted here. We're going to go behind this house right there so I don't get spotted by anybody else. But this STI, unfortunately, he disappears. And we are not able to put a shell into him. But we're going to stay behind this building. We're going to lose our six cents. Our IS-7 should be able to take care of him right there. And he does. And now we're going to move further towards north side to see if we can spot anything else over here. I know there was a grill over here. And we do spot him right there. And we're going to shut him down just like that again. I didn't have to aim fully because like I mentioned to you guys earlier. I have a snapshot. I have other gun perks on this commander, which allows me to pretty much shoot without the reticle shrinking all the way. And this gun hits more often than not. Anyway, so this is the situation I was talking about earlier. I'm going to get myself really close, really close to these heavies that won the town. And they're going to approach this location over here. So we're going to turn around. Obviously, you always want to turn around so that you can run off quicker. The tank is faster going forward than backwards. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to set ourselves in a position where we have enough gun depression to hit these guys. And that's what I'm looking for right here. I have enough gun depression. Now, this shot is not good because that Conqueror is playing it well. He's only showing his turret and I don't want to risk that shot right now. I don't want to get spotted because if I do... I might spook this conqueror and we don't want to do that we just want to take him out of the game right but here i have a narrow shot and look at that accuracy i just saw a little bit of his bottom plate and i was able to put that shell in and take him out of the game at the same time we ran off because i'm pretty sure that amx 50b was looking at me there for a split moment so now that the threat is under control is7 i think has enough hp to deal with this other heavy tank I decided to go in here and see if anyone is creeping up on this side of the map. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to climb up here and see if we can spot anything. And can we spot something? Nothing. So nothing is coming. And we're going to move further. Now, again, with this tank, because it has such a great camo, I'm not afraid to be moving forward. Because I can get relatively close to the opposition's tanks without getting spotted. So here, unfortunately, because this AMX 50B wasn't behind a tree anymore and he passed me at the closer distance, he spotted me here. And unfortunately, we're going to have to scramble here to get away. He puts a shell into us, but he's a one shot to us right now. So we should be able to reload 
and take him out of the game. The only question is, is the Ari going to be paying attention to me? He is paying attention to me. Luckily, he didn't set me on fire. But we were able to take out the MX-50B, and that's a key kill right there. And even though the game is close right now, I think we have it sort of in a bag. The only two tanks left on the opposition team is the Ardy and this Death Star. So we're going to try to go after this Death Star first. We need to help out our IS-7. I'm going to try to take him out of the game. So we're going to try to creep out from the middle. I mean, I could have taken a shorter distance there, but it didn't matter. Because our tier 8 already takes out the Death Star. And these are just like regular games in this tank. I mean, look at that. We're sitting at 5.7k damage, 1300 assisted. Yeah, I mean, you can have really good games in this tank. So we're gonna search for the Ardy right now. And yeah, the funny thing, Ardy was pre-aiming here. But we were able to kill him and Ardy managed to kill us at the same time. Nevertheless, we finished the game securing the win for the team. We finished with a victory. I mean, decent result, and that's what you're going to see in this tank. You're going to be getting decent results like that if you're going to play it right. Obviously, if you have a good tank setup, if you play it at a distance, don't brawl it out unless you 1v1. If you 1v1, you can brawl it out because this tank can, because of decent reload, you might be able to. So it depends on the situation. Nothing spectacular, just a decent game. Just wanted to show you this tank and give you some of my opinion on this tank. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. More videos coming soon. Until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, checking out.